Welcome back, viewers. Today, we embark on a journey into the heart of the South China Sea, where the Philippines has taken a bold step, opening its islands to the U.S. military. Join us as we unravel the layers of this strategic move and its far-reaching implications for the region. The geopolitical landscape in the South China Sea is witnessing a seismic shift. The Philippines, traditionally neutral, is increasingly leaning towards a robust military partnership with the United States. Strategically located islands are now becoming crucial in this power play. The access granted to the U.S. military marks a departure from the Philippines' previous stance and signals a new chapter in its foreign policy. The Philippines is increasingly aggressive in developing islands in the South China Sea which it considers part of its territory, to make them more habitable for Philippine military forces. This plan comes amid increasing tensions between the Philippines and China over recent times, with both countries claiming territory in the South China Sea. Apart from the Second Thomas Shoal, locally known as Aedongjin, the Philippines occupies eight other areas in the South China Sea and considers them part of its exclusive economic zone. We want to develop the nine islands, especially the islands we occupy, said Manila military chief Romeo Bronner, quoted by AFP. Bronner said the military wanted to provide desalination machines for soldiers living on the warship, which the Philippines deliberately landed on the Second Thomas Sol in 1999 to assert its sovereignty. The Philippines also plans to modernize its military with the acquisition of more ships, radars, and aircraft, as it shifts its focus to territorial defense from internal defense. Apart from the Philippines, Brunei, China, Malaysia, Taiwan, and Vietnam are also competing claims for sovereignty in the South China Sea. China previously warned the Philippines to act with caution following a series of incidents between the two countries in the disputed waters of the South China Sea over recent times. In a telephone call between Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi and Philippine Foreign Minister Enrique Manalo, it was said that the two countries were facing serious difficulties. Wang Yi said that China-Philippines relations are currently facing serious difficulties, said the contents of the conversation summarized by the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs, as quoted by AFP. The root of the problem is that the Philippines changed its long-standing policy stance, reneged on its own commitments, continued to provoke and cause trouble at sea, and undermined China's legal rights, the statement continued. Meanwhile, in a statement issued by the Philippine Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Manalo described his conversation with Wang Yi as frank. We had frank conversations and ended our discussions with a clearer understanding of our respective positions on a number of issues, Manalo said in the statement. Previously, in a video released by the Philippine Coast Guard, Chinese ships were seen firing water cannons at ships belonging to Manila. The Philippines also released an incident involving two ships carrying supplies to fishermen at Scarborough Shoal and a small garrison at Second Thomas Shoal. There was also a collision between Filipino and Chinese ships at Second Thomas Shoal, where a number of Filipino soldiers were stationed on warships. The Philippine government will continue exposing China's aggression in the West Philippine Sea, declared an official of the Philippine Coast Guard, PCG. Previously, Department of Foreign Affairs Undersecretary Theresa Lazaro and China's Assistant Foreign Minister Nong Rong held a meeting where they presented their respective positions on the Aonjin Shul and assured each other of their mutual commitment to avoid escalation of tensions, according to the DFA. Previous face-offs between Philippine and Chinese Coast Guard and maritime authorities in parts of the West Philippine Sea turned hostile, with the Chinese blocking Philippine vessels 
and even targeting water cannons at them. In a post on Twitter, PCG Commodore J. Terry Allot wrote he hoped, China will now know the meaning of commitment and sincerity, that whatever you promised and agreed upon on the conversation table should also be implemented on the ground. On our part, we will never hesitate to continue exposing their aggression and provocative actions that heighten the tension in the West Philippine Sea. If ever there will still be, he added. Teril also said the Philippines' continuous assertive transparency will prove to the world whether China truly honors their words or it remained disconnected with their actions. The Philippines asserts its sovereignty and fishing rights on its exclusive economic zone, as decided in the landmark 2016 ruling, while China continues to reject the verdict, proclaiming they have rights over the South China Sea based on history. Meanwhile, former Supreme Court Associate Justice Antonio Carpio declared that it was good the Philippines and China continues to talk, but this would not resolve the dispute. Breaking down the intricacies of the Island Access Agreement, we uncover the terms and conditions that come with this unprecedented move. And there you have it, a comprehensive exploration of the Philippines' strategic shift in opening its islands to the U.S. military. If you found this video informative, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more in-depth analyses on global affairs. Until next time, stay informed.